Good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening from where you're joining us. My name is Shakima, and uh, I am uh, from the Democratic Republic of Congo. I will be co-moderating this session with my colleague, Lyudmila Udud. We are very delighted to have you join us today for this webinar. In this session where we aim to boost the connection between uh, IUAWP's members in Africa, we will discover the voluntary work opportunities within the IWA network. We will also understand the benefits and the opportunity that comes with active participation within the association. And lastly, we will gain a clear understanding of how engaging within the IWA network can enhance the career objective that everyone has. So please be reminded we have some house keeping rules. Um, this call will be recorded and made available on demand on the IWA website. And also uh, kindly use the chat box for interactive activities and the Q&A to send questions to the panelists. And the question will be answered during the, the Q&A and the discussion session. So, uh, I think without further ado, I'm going to introduce my colleague, Lyudmila, who will be presenting on uh, IWAYWP. Lyudmila is part of the steering committee of uh, YWPs. She holds a PhD in water supply and sewage. She's a member of the Iowa Young Water Professional Steering Committee in charge of events and communication. In general, Lyudmila has around 10 years of experience in water sector. And since 2008, she has internationally, uh, she has international experience as actively participating in organizing different events and assisting on site as, as part of the IWA sustainability in uh, water sector specialist group. She's involved in working on series of webinar on empowering women as and as part of the Imaging Water Leader Steering Committee. She, she's also involved in uh, activities that uh, empower young water professionals in the, in the water sector, both regionally and internationally. Welcome, Lyudmila. Mm, excuse me for, for some kind of technical issues. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you very much for introdu introduction, Shateng, and uh, I'm also thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, the, um, from my side, I would like to, I believe there might be some new people who doesn't work like with IWA this day joining us. So let me just give some short overview of the IWA and I, uh, Young Water Professional um, community. So uh, overall, uh, IWA uh, Association is uh, the network of water professionals striving for a world in which water is wisely, sustainably, and equitably managed. Uh, in these terms, uh, the um, uh, International Water Association uh, is focused on being international reference for the source of knowledge for sustainable water solution, uh, support the global community to their ambitions in relation to water uh, CDGs, uh, being a catalyst for innovation, knowledge, and uh, best practice for the sector, and also to provide extreme and leadership transition to sustainable water solutions. Uh, overall, uh, within IWA Association, we have different, different types of institutions, starting from academia, and uh, um, like and up to like industry and other other branches of water sector. Also, IWA um, um, can be found in different uh, parts of the world, from from Europe to Asia and uh, and Americas and other locations. Um, what IWA do? So uh, through the uh, organization, uh, the members uh, who participate in this organization, they organize the, and support the events. They publish articles like uh, in journals 
and books or specific uh, or separately journals and book they provide enabling a per platform for water professionals um uh, on different events or on uh, for example like um uh, online one like uh, IWA Connect Plus, and uh, also uh, they provide professional development opportunities. Uh, the uh, itself on organization consists of different uh, sectors. For example, like specialist groups, task groups, governing members, young professionals, which are which actually uh, this is the sector which <laughs> we represent, and uh, all other um sectors so if to talk specifically about uh young water professionals uh this is the group of people it's it's uh, more more likely to say like it's a representative body of uh, the uh young water professionals to the uh, association overall and to it's like um strategy Overall, like young water professionals, it's the professionals under like 35 years old. It can be students and uh, also like an early career, uh, career professionals. Uh, yes, and uh, to, to um, uh, support the development of young water professionals and to ensure sufficient professional capacity of the water sector, IWA created kind of like a, a young water professional community. Um, uh, on this slide, you can see the representatives, myself and Shateng, we are uh, the representative and also like a, a few of our other uh, panelists today. So you'll be able to hear from them as well. And um, another part of um, uh, activities for young water professionals is uh, young water professionals chapters. Uh, they uh, are located in 40 countries uh, up to now what I know, but I believe there might be already some updates. And the uh, young water professional chapters, uh, they are kind of uh, voluntary networks of young water professionals and the national level. Uh, they um, endorse the vision of uh, uh, IWA to develop uh, like a strong uh, network uh, towards the water-wise um, uh, future. Uh, I think from, from my side, it will be enough to say about young water professional chapters, right? As today we have like uh, so many uh, representatives specifically from the uh, North and Latin America who, who will be able to share specifically their experiences and to share what can be the opportunities being a, chap being a member of young, young Water Professional Chapter in the different countries. So, yeah, I think we will continue with uh, the presentation of um, our speakers. And I'm uh, handing the floor to you, Shaten. Thank you so much, Lyudmila, for giving us a deep insight about IWA and what it does, as well as the involvement of young water professional in the water sector. So uh, I'd just like to remind those who have just joined us that we have some housing, housekeeping rules and uh, the question, if you have any question, you can just write it in the Q&A box and uh, it will be answered during the Q&A session or the discussion. So I'd like to invite our first uh, speaker, who is Ayat. Um, uh, he's Ayat from uh, Canada, Ontario. Um, Ayat Raza currently works as a project engineer with Continental Carbon Group in Ontario, Canada. His works involve providing hair, drinking water, and blood water treatment solution to clients utilizing various physical and chemical water treatment technologies. Ayat obtained his bachelor's and master's in chemical engineering with a research in the area of ozone and supercritical water oxidation. He is currently serving as the regional director on the IW, AYWP Canada, and uh, he is one of the founding members of the IWAYWP Canadian chapters. 
welcome Ayat and kindly share with us um, your experience on successful strong network in university and YWP events. The floor is yours. Thank you. Um, good evening, good uh, afternoon, and good morning, everyone from wherever you are joining today. My name is Hayat Raza. I'm uh, the outgoing regional director for Ontario. And um, I think my term is done here at YWP Canada because we are going to have elections in a few weeks' time. But um, today, the six minutes I have got, I wanted to just talk about uh, how we in four years have become a very influential and strong YWP group, uh, contributing both at a, a domestic, uh, which is national level, as well as international level. So uh, next slide, please. So uh, as of right now, we are 17 folks. Um, we are focused on different aspects of the day-to-day -day function of the YWP group. Um, we um, have, uh, when we started in 2019, we had 12 executives, but we realized that as we were expanding and we had more members interested in our events, we had to expand. Um, and one of the things we have done from the very start is to make sure that the people who are going to be running the group are going to be made up of uh, people involved in different areas of the water industry. So uh, we have research students who are currently pursuing their PhDs. We have uh, assistant professors who have just started their career. Um, we have industry professionals, uh, including myself, uh, who work in different aspects of the industry. So it could be consulting, uh, it could be equipment supply, it could be internet of things or utilities. And the time we started out in 2019, one of the biggest things we did was we got support from our senior professionals. So in our network, we reached out to people and told them that we are starting this organization and do support us. So one of the reasons why we have had a drastic um, uh, increase uh, to what we are doing right now is because of the support we have got both at a university level as well as the industry level. So just to give you an idea of um, the events we have had, um, as we started in 2019, uh, within the first six months, we were hit by COVID. So we had to move everything online and majority of our events till the second term started in August 2021, uh, our events were done only online. So as a matter of fact, uh, we started off with mentoring sessions uh, where a senior professional will come and talk to students about uh, how it is to work in academia or the industry. Then we had workshops and panel discussions. Um, a majority of our uh, panel discussions between 2019 and 2021 were focused around the pandemic and its impact on the water wastewater industry. However, uh, once we have started moving uh, away um, from the pandemic, we have started focusing our pan panel discussions on the future of the water wastewater industry, climate resilience, as well as um, what is going to be the urban landscape look, um, look outlook in the coming years. Um, we also have e-learning sessions where we had internationally recognized uh, personalities in the water wastewater industry come and talk to um, our young water professionals, whether they are in the industry or academia. One of the biggest achievements we had in the pandemic was our Congress, our conference. Uh, it was our first conference, which was organized uh, completely online over a period of three days. Um, and we made the necessary um, establishments to make sure that we are successful. Um, one of the things uh, which was pioneering was we had over 200 participants in this conference despite it being online. And at the same time, we have also started mentorship programs uh, collaborating with uh, universities. And um, one of the, this has been very helpful because a lot of students have been able to get jobs, whether in universities or as postdoctoral or in the industry because of these mentorship programs. Uh, some other events were uh, regional networking events where um, we just didn't focus on technically empowering YWPs. We also wanted to network with them so that they expand their network and continue the tradition of growing our YWP community in Canada. So. Uh, our regional networking events are mostly uh, trails uh, or going to hikes or uh, meeting for social uh, uh, social events at a coffee shop or something. So that's uh, one of the things we have also focused on is that we have not kept it completely technical. We have tried to keep it social as well. So that way we can keep expanding our network. Uh, 
And um, lastly, apart from all the events mentioned earlier, which were also done from uh, in the second term from 2021 to 2023, uh, our biggest success in-person event was our second YWP conference. Uh, we had keynote speakers, we had panel discussions, everything which happens in a conference. But one very important thing to be noted is we had speakers not only from Canada, we had people come over from all over the world. So we had speakers from India, we had speakers from Africa, we had uh, speakers from Europe, and we also had people from Mexico and South America. So one of the biggest success uh, was we were able to, even though it was a national event, we were able to make it international by getting a lot more people involved. Uh, we had over 150 plus um, uh, abstracts submitted from globally of which we had to select 64 speakers. And um, lastly, we capped it off by making sure we followed the global I IWA, YWP Congress, uh, sorry, IWA Congress events. And we actually also had a gala dinner towards the end. So of all the events I have mentioned and all the things we have done, uh, what has been our success like? Um, one of the biggest things is in four years, we have had over 3000 plus LinkedIn followers and it is growing by the day. Um, the other thing is we have got recognition locally, domestically, regionally, uh, within Canada, where people recognize what YWP Canada is and what its purpose serves. And also at an international level, uh, we have had Farooq, who is the chair of uh, YWP Canada, uh, be a part of the steering committee, as well as the IWA Strategic Council. Um, I myself have been actively involved with uh, international events for YWP. Uh, uh, YWP uh, globally. Um, the other impact we have had because we started this organization for YWPs, we have had a lot of YWPs actually get jobs or uh, able to better their career by uh, getting into publication or getting into academia or getting into the company they desire to get into because of all the events we have kept for them. Uh, we have been expanding our network and also this year we have more applicants already for our upcoming term from 2023 to 2025. So uh, in short, uh, I just wanted to touch overall on uh, what, how we started, uh, what kind of events we have kept um, and why our, unique, uh, our events are kind of unique, which uh, a lot of other YWP chapters have not looked at and what kind of success it has been for us. So thank you very much for listening and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much for sharing with us uh, the experience of the wider Canadian chapter. And uh, we have to say that it's really insightful and inspiring what you're doing. And uh, without further ado, we'd like to introduce our second speaker who is um, Hassan from uh, the United States of America. Mamoudou Hassan uh, is a biosolid and resource recovery manager at Baltimore City Department of Public Works, USA. His specialization includes biosolid treatment and recovery and resource recovery in support of circular economy, emerging contaminant removal, and innovation for water and wastewater treatment. After receiving his bachelor in civil engineering. Mamoudoul received his master's and PhD in civil and environmental engineering from George Washington University. Mamoudoul believes that um, in an era of climate change, there is importance of including people and uh, water and uh, climate should be interlinked. Mamoudoul is also passionate about teaching and mentoring students to build their career in water. So Mamoudoul, uh, welcome and uh, kindly introduce us to the YWA, IWA, YWP USA chapter. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, uh, this is Mahmoudul Hassan uh, and I'm actually representing the Young Water Professional Chapter, IW Young Water Professional Chapter from USA. And our chapter is pretty new. I would say that it is just like a couple of months 
Uh, so most of the activities that I will present, those are actually our future ob objectives, and we, uh, and those are already scheduled on our uh, on our calendar. So one, one one thing I want to share with you guys is. is uh, in the USA, the young water professional chapters um, were very strong, uh, but those were under different organizations like Water Environment Federation and American Water Works Association. Mm, but uh, but uh, we did not have uh, IWA chapter in the USA. So even though we did uh, several uh, YWP activities here, but those are actually local. Local means inside the USA. But since we established our a new uh, YWP chapter in the USA. So now it's our time to, you know, to expand our YWP activities, not inside the USA, along with um, inside, we are trying to spreading our activities outside of the US. And that's why I'm trying to, today I'll, I'll discuss how um, involving with uh, this young water chapter in the USA um, is different than other YWP chapters in the US. Next chapter, uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so this is our chapter objective. So the main goal is to provide career development to our young water professionals in the USA. So now uh, we all know that, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, we have, uh, as I mentioned, that we have, we, we have uh, uh, different YWP events, but, but those are mainly Mm, US based, but we found that couple of YWPs they are after after they graduated. What they that's why that uh, uh, that is our objective. Like not only our uh, support be you know within the US, but it will be outside of the US so that they can explore and they can expand their career in in, in outside of the US. Also, we we have another plan to do some mentorship program now with our experienced water prof professionals. So we already connected a couple of our um, you know YWPs with uh, experienced water professionals. We have YWP chapter, and we have also experienced. Um, IWP, we call it USENC in the USA. So we, our members time to time attended those, um, you know, meetings and they are trying to get involved with the, uh, with the experienced water professionals and try, are, are trying to learn uh, something new, which is very much, uh, you know, useful for, for their, um, uh, you know, professional growth. Uh, and with that, we, we are, we're also trying to you know, provide them with some opportunities uh, to work within the YWPs, not inside the IWP, IWA, but along with like joint collaboration with some other other YWPs under WAVE, under AWWA, and also some other affiliated YWPs within the IWA. For example, we have a, a modeling and integrated assessment group in the IWA. We have water reuse group in, in inside IWA. So we're trying to you know give all those opportunities to our YWPs so that they can. Mm, uh, you know, get involved with those those technical technical committees as well, and do some volunteer support to to those committees. Apart from that, so we all know that in IWA they they are they are, they are organizing conferences in every part of the world. Uh, saying that there we have some other you know conferences organized by IWA in in the USA. So we found that in the USA when that IWA um, you know conferences are uh, you know organized, so we did not have uh, you know local volunteers to to help those uh, conferences so our main another goal is how we can help iwa to to organize those uh, conferences inside the usa and 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 for example uh, i want to share with the double mod conference that will be um, uh, scheduled next year and uh, and few of our members ywp members they are very much involved with with, with organizing with those that IWA or WRR mod conferences. So similar to that, so there might be some other conferences IWA by IWS, and we are very much happy to provide support to organize those those, uh, those conferences in the USA. And uh, you know, in in, in the water uh, sector, so we have several issues, uh, and we are, we are trying to you know raise awareness or you know among our YWPs to solve those water issues. Uh, and is there in a high, high, you know, is there any, any other innovative technologies in the market? We are also trying to, you know, um, tell our YWPs to, to, you know, to be acquainted with those innovative technologies. Next slide, please. Uh, 
So now, uh, why these uh, YWP chapter is different than other other YWPs? First of all, it's a knowledge exchange and networking among among the peers uh, throughout the world. So in the in, in the other YWP chapters, those are only within the USA, but here they, they get the chance to do exchange their knowledges among all the peers in the outside of the US. And also another thing I want to mention that is global priorities versus local priorities. So we have some we have some global problem. So. So what what happened? Like uh, globally, we have some water challenges, like in Africa, in the uh, in, in, you know in, in South America, in Europe. So we are trying to uh, you know address those those. Uh, uh, you know water issues in our day, daily meeting, and we are trying to discuss those uh, how we can resolve and how how those are actually connected with our uh, problems. And also, that, another thing I want to mention that international collaboration and partnership, uh, international best practice, uh, exposure to international best best practice, and how how um, you know our YWPs are engaged with uh, with any other IWP events in the USA. So those are also our uh, objectives, and those are different than other YWP chapters. Next slide. Please. And yeah, uh, our uh, uh, and couple of advantage advantages that WWP that they can get is the international network, uh, interdisciplinary approach, exposure to international best practices, opportunities for international events and exchange programs, and definitely global recognition and collaboration. So they will get the chance to collaborate with other WWPs across the globe. That will be also helpful for for their their their, their careers. Next slide, please. So the, as I mentioned, that we are very much uh, new, and this is our, our um, committees, and we are very much active, and hopefully in the in in this next calendar. So already it has been started. So in, in next couple of months, you will see a couple of more activities uh, under under IW, YWP USA chapter. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mamudul. And uh, it's really good to notice that even if the chapter is new, at least uh, you are helping provide help for career development and growth and other advantage that you mentioned during uh, your presentation. So uh, for those who have just joined us, uh, kindly write your question down to the Q&A uh, box. And uh, after this uh, third, third speaker, we will be able to, to, receive, uh, to, to receive our first panel of question. So uh, I'd like to invite our third speaker, who is René Cardena de Villa from Mexico. René is a chemical engineer from the Universidad Veracruzana. He holds uh, a master's degree in environmental engineering from uh, UNAM, where he works on hydrogen production through photo fermentation from uh, volatile fatty acid. Later in 2018, he earned the PhD in environmental engineering from the Instituto of uh, Ingeniera UNAM, where he evaluated hydrogen production in a bioelectronic, bioelectrochemical system. He conducted a research uh, to stay in the laboratory of environmental biotechnology at ENRA at Narbonne, France. Uh, René, you have the floor. And thank you so much. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I'm René Cartegna, and I'm VC Chair of the John Water Professional Chapter of Mexico. Next slide, please. OK, I start with the committee member distribution. Uh, this is interesting because um, most of our members uh, are focused in, in, in this location. And it's interesting because Mexico is a great country and not, um, not, not have a lot of members in, in, in all territory. The next, for, for this reason, uh, I start with a challenge for, for the chapter. Uh, it's necessary to increase the, 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 the ter uh, territorial reach of, of, of young water. And for this reason, uh, we propose create a young um, water networks within state universities because in general, uh, don't, don't have the, the contact with, with, the, with the public space in, in, in the schools. And create uh, uh, we, 
we believe uh, it's important to 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 have uh, members in the in the public universities well uh, other thing is uh, inform the public and private sector of the existence of the young water because in general best sectors don't know the existence of, of the chapter and uh, we, we don't participate in, in the in the decision or, or in the activities for 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 these sectors well uh, and in, involve uh, the YWP in issues and activities related to water management. This is related with the, with the other point, with, with the, the, the networks with the public and, and, and private sectors at the next. But well, now our, our, our main action are, are the, the webinars is, is, is the, the best activity for, for our chapter because um, our, 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 main, our main audience is a young, young people, uh, undergraduate people, and the participation is it's, um, high in general. And we, we communicate different things, different problematics of, of, of Mexico or Latin America problematics. Uh, and well, this is uh, the, the principal tool for, for of our chapter, the, the, the webinars. And well, uh, we do collaboration with other chapters in, in Latin America and participate in different um, events uh, of, of, of other chapter or other regional uh, activities. But well, now our opportunities, we believe the, 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 the main tools are the social media. And especially in Mexico is the, the, the Facebook um, because we, we observe this is the, the, the principal uh, social media to, to connect with, with, with young people and but now we we need to exploit social networks like linkedin and, and twitter because the linkedin it's the other opportunity for for our chapter because uh, we believe uh, with with linkedin uh, create connection with with um, the public sector and and the industry sector and for this we need to generate dynamic social media material because don't have an, 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 a solid, uh, uh, I don't know, um, a, a solid, uh, uh, oh, a, a solid ch chapter. Uh, we need to create more material with original ideas and original material and well, we we work in, in, in this point specifically now. And well, the, it's all. To, and thank you so, so much for the invitation. Thank you, Hene, for your representation. I think the chapter is facing some technical issues on this. Lajemila, can you go over to the next slide? Yes, sure. It seems like it's me who was thinking technical issues. I'm, okay. I'm hoping, hoping you guys uh, have seen the the, the final president words of Renee. And I wanted to say, like, uh, you know, it's uh, very inspiring to see like motivated young water professionals who. Um, who is trying to increase, you know, the engagement overall, and also to 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 help other young water professionals to develop their skills. Um, overall, let me check the um, uh, chat box because we are heading to the question and answers. Uh, if we have any from from the audience at this moment, um, we haven't received yet any any questions. But I would like to invite all the participants if they have it so they can share it via the chat so we can collect it. Another option is that if you are free, you can open your mic and state your question on that. Yes, that will be great if we have some something. But uh, while we're waiting, I would like to 
ask um, Hayat, for example, you were mentioning about uh, that you get the support from the senior professionals. Can you please uh, tell us a few examples? What was the support? And, uh, yeah. well, well, just to give you an example, um, Siva Sarthi, who was one of the IWA members at that time when we started the organization, he was the one who was pushing the idea of uh, YWP Canada. And so he was an industry professional. Uh, similarly, we have a lot of uh, people uh, in our executive committee who were uh, students and their professors actually encouraged the idea of YWP Canada as well. So from the very start, they were ready to uh, share their knowledge, their resources, uh, their network with us about uh, the goal of YWP Canada. So that was what was really helpful for us uh, from the very start that we had a strong foundation where uh, we had the backing of senior professionals. So um, in any organization, yes, you can start a, wa a water chapter, uh, but uh, it's very important that uh, for it to be more successful and have a better outreach and more people are interested in being uh, contributing to its events and activities, it's really important that you, uh, the senior professionals also are on the same page as, um, uh, as the YWPs and believe in the vision. So um, I think Farooq is on the call as well, and she can add a little more because she is the chair. I work under her, so she may have more input on this. Uh, Farooq, you want to add something? You covered it all, Haya. Thank you so much. And thanks, everyone. Yep. Um, I just uh, can add the role of the governing members. In Canada, we have really, really supported governing members, and they have been a really great asset for us. Since we started the chapter afterwards, they have been sponsoring us, supporting us with our finances because we didn't have account to handle our finances and they were super helpful um, helping us to manage our finances through their organization. That was one thing uh, when we started and also sending us examples of how they run in Canada uh, so we have a role model because it's hard, it's a, it's a big country to navigate and uh, we were starting small. Uh, so I would also suggest to everyone to talk to their governing members, get closer to them, and uh, and yeah, be a team and work together. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Farouk, for adding this uh, you know comment. Uh, and also we have the question from Tal Talha Rifai. Uh, uh, I'm not sure like to which chapter it may be relevant, but many uh, maybe. Uh, some of you can think about that. So she asked, or he, uh, did any of the chapter think of ways to include UN Water Conference outputs in their planned activities or events? Is there any volunteers to respond? <laughs> Maybe United States wants to include. How about you, Mahmoudul? Yeah, that's that, that's a great uh, question. Uh, and we know that a couple of weeks ago we had a, a United Nations so water conference after so many years and, and there are a couple of good, very good resolutions. And and um, since we're in the US and uh, um, we are pretty new, so we had that opportunity to include, you know, in, in our, you know, chapter, like in our next objective. So what we think like that, uh, Mm, our main goal of how we can you know connect our objectives with the united nations uh, you know you know one thing is like uh, resource recovery and, and and another is decarbonizations and I, we tried in initially we tried to look at some their how we can correlate with their sdg goals with ours but those are mainly based on sanitations and um, and in in the us most of our you know, treatment facilities are mainly offsite with, with the sewer line. So, so that that's why we we even though our plan was to do, to do for some SDG six, um, and and then we realized that no, it probably US is not the best country because we we have a limited scope here because there are, there are other other countries they have several challenges on, on sanitations. But our goal is how we can go for decarbonizations like a, 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 until twenty. 30 and 2035 how we can decarbonize our you know our treatment facilities uh, and that's why our next webinar that we are planning to uh, you know um, uh, organize uh, under ywp that is actually decarbonizations in 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 the water facilities uh, and we are planning to invite the experienced uh, you know professionals to to talk and and to you know to chime our ywp so that so that they can they can learn and they can also do uh, you know in
include that in 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 the daily active daily jobs uh, and not only that um i i also want to highlight uh, one more thing that is actually um, like uh, uh, how to say that like I, we saw that our problem sometimes is very localized for example we have some uh, nitro uh, nutrient problem in the us so we're, we're trying to solve how we can optimize our treatment facilities through uh, through innovations and some uh, or any other technologies but other countries they don't have that specific thing but those are similar for example like uh, some countries they 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 have land issues we we don't have land issues but they have some other they have some other challenges so how we can can next so even uh, yeah, when when they you know promulgate the resolutions those are actually for all countries so so how we can get some specific uh, you know objectives that are actually challenging for other countries but how we can get those into our chapter just to just to just to make sure that probably if we have some expertise from the uh, experienced uh, young experienced professionals how we can connect those works to experienced professionals to to other countries YWP, something like that so that is our goal like and and, and still now we are trying to trying to you know include uh, some other aspects like uh, especially the sdg6 uh, in sanitations uh, like how we can incorporate those ideas in our in our chapter but right now we are only t thinking about decarbonizations and uh, and and, uh, and nutrient removal all right thank thank you very much for such comprehensive mm -hmm. response uh, uh there is I think we can respond one more question and then we will move to the another session. So uh, Andrea was asking, Andrea Zapata was asking, like, there are activities where companies from industrial sector can be invited to present their experience challenges in the water treatment in any of the webinars that the chapters do. So I'm wondering, maybe uh, uh, Rene haven't speak yet. Maybe he can talk about, uh, is it possible in Mexico like this? Yeah, yes, <laughs> in fact, I, I write to Andrea to invite uh, to to share the, the experience in Mexico because th this is interesting, but, but the activities in our, our chapter and, and yes, of course. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. I think we will keep uh, other questions for, for, for a bit later. And uh, yeah, I mean, maybe even during the other session, the speakers can try to respond them. But we will be moving to next speakers. And uh, uh, our next speaker will be the uh, representative of a uh, young water professional chapter in Argentina. Um, it's Agustin Lam Landaburu. He's also my colleague, to, colleague within the uh, steering committee in Young Water Professionals in IWA. So he's a civil engineer and has a master's degree in water management from University of Buenos Aires, where he's currently assistant professor. He has experience in water and sanitation consultancy and uh, wastewater treatment audit. Um, as I mentioned, uh, she, he is a part of young water professionals and specifically he's a president the president of argentina chapters uh, so rene the floor is yours please oh i'm sorry not rene uh, augustin excuse me hi all okay i i will tell you about the events that we organize this year with young water professional argentina uh, first i am going to start with an um, in-person activity uh, with May our we have done our first uh, in-person activities in the last year in 2022. Uh, we haven't done uh, in-person activities. Activities all was uh, online, and so it was a, a challenge, and it was very nice. Uh, we we did this activity with UTN. That is a National Te uh, Technological University, um, in, and it was during the World Watcher Day. In, in the picture, you can see that uh, was I, <laughs> like young water professional, was uh, the president of the governing member, I is Argentina, and uh, the vice president of 
Iwa, Daniel Olasco, who is at the right side. Uh, then after uh, this event, we we took the, the picture that you can see on the right. And we have a, a, a dinner, a social dinner. So it was a, a very nice event, uh, a very good experience to, to reply. So uh, next slide, please. Now I am going to tell you about uh, webinars. Uh, we did a, a webinar about uh, constructed wetlands. In Argentina, uh, we don't have uh, guidelines or regulations about how to design or construct a, a wetlands. So we saw that it is very important to introduce these topics and um, push it in, on, on the agenda. Uh, and we have an, an a specialist of well constructions of constructed wetlands in, in our committee. So it was very fruitful for, for us to, to do these events. In the second in the second picture, you can see um, a regional webinar. This regional uh, we did with uh, two organizations more, principally, um, IDIS Joven Interamericana, that is a, a, another association like IWI, but only in, in, in America, and uh, the, the Younger Coalition from, of Water. Um, this event has the purpose to get more information about the UN Water Conference. So it was very fruitful too, because um, all the young people that uh, was to travel to, uh, to the UN Conference um, could have this uh, space and this event to, to change um, and share experience on what they expect about it. After this, uh, after the conference, uh, IWI with his fellows in America and with our support organized uh, another event to about the conclusion of this UN Water Conference. So it, it was very nice. Uh, uh, we could connect with uh, another younger professionals uh, and was good. And in the um, Third and fourth uh, flyer, uh, you can see um, webinars um, did with the other with Colombia, Mexico, Ecuador, and Spain. It was a, a very good event. Um, the topics were about women in the sector in the water sector and about uh, efficiency in in water networks. Um, it was good with shared experience. Um, we have uh, our webinars in Spanish. So it was it is very important for us uh, to have uh, knowledge in, in Spanish. And the, the next slide, yes. Our challenge, uh, we think that we need more social events. We have some uh, we have this event that I mentioned. Um, we have a um, meeting uh, of the steering committee presentials, but we have to, to improve it to, to gain more engagements. We have to, we need more connection with universities. We see that this is a, a very, uh, very important uh, partnerships. And uh, yes, the high potential in regional networks, um, because we saw that these last events were very important uh, to, to improve our knowledge at regional levels. Uh, and I think that we are very good. <laughs> so th this is all for me. Um, yeah. Thank you very much for the invitation and I am waiting for it, for your questions. Thank you, Augustine. I 
totally can agree with you that beside technical aspect, networking is also very important. So yeah, thank you for uh, stressing like on this uh, point in this type of aspect of our professional life. Uh, and um, uh, let me introduce the, our next speaker. It's also my colleague from Young Water Professional Steering Committee. It's Claudia uh, Prang. Uh, she's a civil engineer specializing in hydrology and water resources management. She's a water and sanitation consultant, lecturer, member of, uh, as I already mentioned, uh, steering committee of IWA and vice chair of Young Water Professional Ecuador. With uh, a passion for science, development, and climate change adaptation, she's dedicated to employing you, uh, young voices and facilitating knowledge transfer. So, uh, Claudia, it's my pleasure to, to, to pass the floor to you. Thank you, Ludmilla, for the introduction. And thank you, everyone, for joining. I want to give a short introduction of our kind of our history as YWP Ecuador. Uh, if you could help me with the next slide. So our origin story, it began in 2021. Um, I want to give this short introduction just so everyone has an idea of how the process of becoming a, a YWP chapter actually works. Uh, it started on my part with an email. I attended an event much like this one and I reached out to the IWA uh, liaison person with youth at that time it was Laura and I said I'm interested in, in doing a YWP Ecuador chapter if there's interest from anyone else she said sure let me see if I can get more people involved and then a couple of months passed and we had I think four or five uh, women interested on uh, working together to to do this and create this chapter so in 2022, we did all the paperwork in 2021, but in 2022, we had our launch event on March 24th, and it was a pretty big success. We had uh, a lot of uh, people connected. We collaborated with other YW chapters that helped us with uh, the introduction. Denmark was uh, very, um, it worked with us a lot there. And we did a quick survey to try to understand what would be our role in Ecuador for young water professionals, what the young water professionals needed, if it's capacity building, if it's networking, and if it's capacity building, which type of um, capacity building they would be interested in. And in 2023, now we, are, uh, we still think of us as a young chapter. Uh, but we've already been going for a little over a year and we've been working mainly with events as well. Uh, I'm not going to mention anymore the webinars with the Ibero-American uh, network that we were part of as well because already it was mentioned by Argentina and Mexico. But we did also some courses, online courses. We did an event that was very useful for us with Canada where we actually met uh, a person that was part of YWP Canada that was Ecuadorian and was studying in Canada and she uh, it was the first time she was hearing about us so that sort of events are always very useful to try and reach out to as many people as possible could we do the next slide please so uh, here you can see a little bit more of what we are working on currently uh, as all of us, we are working on our communication channels, social media. Uh, we also develop uh, our, well, we're in the process of developing our website, our emails, and we work with capacity building and international cooperation as well. Uh, next slide, please. Here are more concrete things that we are working on. Uh, there's a national event in 2023 that we've, uh, we're trying to figure out how to to actually pull it off. And we are having some informal meetings, discussions, workshops, open courses. I've just finished one, I think it was last week, that we did um, distribution networks and pressurized uh, pipes uh, design. It was just an introduction, but it was really fun to connect with the different people that were trying to get to know our chapter a little better. 
And this last part is something we're working on as well, publication of experiences of our members, projects and initiatives. So we want to open our social media and our channels to amplify the voices of the Ecuadorian YWPs. And when I say Ecuadorian YWPs, I don't mean they have the Ecuadorian nationality, but they are involved in Ecuador. One of our uh, committee members is actually based in Belgium and she's from Belgium, but she did her PhD in Ecuador. So that's why she's been working with us um, all this time. Next slide, please. Mm, I don't know if there's an issue with the presentation uh, until the slides work again. <laughs> what I, the objective of this uh, short talk is not just tell you what we've done what we've done and what we're planning to do, but also give some lessons learned in this first year of actually working as YWP Ecuador. So uh, one of the lessons learned that was positive that we did is kind of like a body system. So we had the, the steering committee that started the YWP that did all the paperwork and we started with a very small group of people. We were worried that if we opened up the floor to anyone that wanted to be part of the YWP Ecuador uh, and said, yeah, I'm interested if we said, okay, you're part of the, of the team and, and bring them into the WhatsApp groups or whatever, that the motivation and the work would get diluted because sometimes it's very easy to say, yeah, I'm interested in water, I'm interested in the young water professionals, but it's a little harder to actually put in the time and effort that is needed to make this sort of initiative work. And as we are in a volunteer basis, we really need people that are motivated uh, to work. So we come up with this better system. So each of us brought one person kind of like a mentee and they started working and now they have their own projects and they have their own initiatives so it worked uh, very well as i said curiosity is easy engagement is a little harder it's easy to get a bunch of people saying yeah we're very interested but the actual engagement is a little harder and i think something that the other chapters have already mentioned is really true we don't only need to have social media, but we need to create some sort of value for the people to, to follow and to engage. Because if we're just posting, I don't know, Happy Water Day, it's not that it's not useful, but it, it lacks that value added. So you actually start engaging and actually start uh, promoting these uh, objectives that we have, right? So, um, that's another, uh, another lesson learned. We're volunteers, life gets in the way. So the key here is adaptability. Uh, it's very easy to come to rely on one person to do all. And if you are the person that has a little more free time at the moment, then it's easy to start taking a lot of responsibilities, but then life gets in the way. So what we would advise is to try and share the responsibility and always working in teams and groups. So activities don't just die out because the person responsible just got a little busy. And I don't know if anyone has any questions, but that would be what I wanted to share with you all. And uh, I don't know if you're going to share the the slides, but in any case, if anyone is interested to, to get to know a little more of our experience and our lessons learned, feel free to contact me or uh, YWP Ecuador in general, and we would be happy to, to share. Also, uh, just mentioning that welcome to the YWP United States. I'm actually based in Washington, DC. So I look forward to collaborating with you as well. And that's it for me. Thank you, Claudia, for your presentation on this. Ludmila, I think she had or I think Ludmila has network issues. Okay. Yes. Uh, I think we're going to introduce our last speaker, and uh, he's Eduardo from uh, Bolivia. So Eduardo is a civil engineer specializing in hydrology currently pursuing a master's degree 
in climate and environment in environment in Brazil. He is the vice chair of the IW AYWP Bolivia and uh, has previously worked as hydro meteorologist for the Ministry of Water as a specialist in water planning information system for the German Corporation. And as part of the IWA Bolivia, Eduardo is committed to strengthening the voice of young people and promoting the transfer of knowledge. Eduardo, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, people. Uh, Eduardo and uh, while we're waiting for the slides, um, I'm very glad to, to, to hear all the, all the presentations. And I'm going to tell, tell you something about us. I'm going to tell you a brief story about our beginnings, about the challenges so far from, from our site and our future goals. And if, if you guys want, I can share my, my screen. Yes, Eduardo, I think that's best. I think that Lujimil is facing some issues with her. Let me just make you a co-host so you can share from your side. Okay. Oh, okay, Lujimil is sharing, so. Okay. As soon as you tell me, I can begin, Lujimila. Yeah, I think, I think you can start. Okay, thank you very much. Sorry for so, don't worry, uh, we all have technical issues all the time. <laughs> so, um, Eduardo, I'm going to tell you a brief story about our beginnings, our challenges so far, and our goals. Next slide, please. Well, IWA members, IWA, and eventually, yeah, what the professional members in, in my country, uh, we began as a group very interested, uh, a postgraduate students that form a, a group later on, very interested in, in to know more about water security. Next, next slide, please. And the Iwa Bolivia chapter was officially approved in 2021. Next slide, please. And ever since, uh, they've been launching many events uh, online, like this, we, this, this webinar celebrating Water Week. Next slide, please. And even in, in person events celebrating something as the International Day for Women and Girls. And I have to tell you that many of these events group effort between the, the members, the senior members, and a group of young water professionals very eager to, to help others understand not only water security, but also the importance of water in our everyday. Next slide, please. But what happened? The previous one, please. Yes. And we thought that our region needs young people eager to seek changes in how we manage water resources. And after one and a half year, uh, these experiences, these past experiences helped us as a group to take the step into creating or into applying to the creation of the Iwa Young Water Professional Chapter. We delivered the required documents, we organized our peace committee, we worked on a proposal, and during through, through all this process, we were led, we were guided by the Bolivia's Iwa, Iwa governing members. Next slide, please. But unfortunately, unfortunately, there were some problems as usual. <clears throat> some of our young water professionals left the foundation group in different stages of this process. And in addition with the people that remained, we had some troubles to establish our network of young water professionals. Uh, this was kind of uh, a bump for, for us because we had great expectations when planning events uh, together with the Iwa governing, governing members. But even though I, I, I told you that there were young professionals that were very eager to, to, to share the, their knowledge and they were already involved in past activities. But we noticed that as a group, we needed more planning and organizational skills. Next slide, please. But but now, well, our application was approved in March of this year. And despite our committee has changed, our first committee, we want to get things done, get things started and accomplish many things. Next slide, please. Our some of our goals are, we want to build our own, our own network 
because we know that in our region, in my country, there are many young researchers, scientists, field workers that are very, very eager to share all the knowledge, but they don't have the channel, the appropriate channels, the, the appropriate ways to, to do that. And we want to launch events and publish some of their work, share the importance, the implications, the, the applications, et cetera. And we also want to actively contribute to, to the Bolivia IWAS chapter. And finally, we want to contribute with our vision and protective on regional issues related, related to water. Next, next slide, please. This is a short story from, from, from us. This is our beginning story, but we believe this is the way. <laughs> next slide, please. Thank you very much. I'm Eduardo and I'm happy to, uh, I'm happy to answer any, any question. Thank you so much, Eduardo, for sharing uh, your, your experiment and view with us. And uh, I think most of us, we actually relate on uh, the issue that we had. You had, sorry, when you started, uh, when you guys started uh, implementing the chapter, when, like, when we mean skills, most of us, we have a lot of members who are not active. And sometimes it actually requires to have skills to try to boost uh, the community, the YWP community and activities that we undertake on ground. So uh, with this presentation, we're going to end our second, uh, our second uh, part of the presentation and uh, we will go to the q and I know that we are rushing uh, with the time, but uh, I think we'll have time for if we have any also from the audience, it will be the opportunity also to write them down so that our panelists can also reply. Uh, I think my first question for this uh, will go to Augustine. I remember you mentioned about the webinar chapter, the webinars that the chapter has organized. Um, I wanted to know were those webinars uh, technically based? If yes, uh, were they technically based on what? Hi, um, um, okay. Um, yes, the most of the webinars are technical based. Uh, in particular, the, the constructed wetland, we see the, the need um, to, to introduce the topic and to put in agenda, so it was, uh, specific about uh, constructed wetland, but not uh, very, very technical because uh, it was not our idea. So, but um, the the rest of the events, yes, were technical, uh, technical basel. Um, for example, uh, the, uh, the, um, the events that we may Presencial, um, it was uh, very technical with seniors and, and we had uh, international dialogue, so it was very interesting um, about uh, the future challenge of water. So I think that it's answer the questions. Yes, you have, you have, and uh, it's actually, uh very important to note that during those technical um the technical webinars that you have you also uh involved the yes which is good and it's try already to start the question that everyone raised about generational talks so i think my question to claudia uh i saw somewhere she said that uh engaging recent graduate is uh, invaluable. So I wanted her to explain to us, uh, or to me also, because I didn't get it well, what was that uh, meaning? Okay, sure. Thank you for the question. That was one of the, the points that I kind of rushed through. But what we mean with this is that um, people that are just finishing their education, their undergraduate degree, are very, very valuable for us in the YWP Ecuador because they have a slightly different vision from us, a little older young water professionals. They also have different resources, different networks. They have more access to, for instance, the, the university network, 
and, and to create this engagement. So for us, it has been very, very important to not only talk to young professionals that have already left their university and have been working for a couple of years, but to actually engage these other recent graduates or people that are on the uh, final years of their uh, undergraduates, because also they tend to have a little more time to do the legwork that is needed for the event and, and that, that sort of things. Uh, for us, our, our um, social media uh, wizard is actually a recent grad and he is, uh, he's been invaluable for our, for our work. That's really good, Claudia. Uh, that made us be uh, also, um, I think, believe more on what they say that everyone has a stone that can bring when we are building the uh, a building. So I think that's really good. I also had another question for you. Uh, it was about the collaboration with other chapter is key. You did quote that. So I wanted to know, do you have any collab activity coming up soon? If yes, with what chapter? Uh, sure. We actually, we identify our collaborations in these sort of events. So Hopefully we will we will find a collab further collaborations here. Right now we're working mainly with the Iber American uh, network that, that were formed because we identified this need from Latin America to have content in Spanish or Portuguese here in Brazil, but that that translation is, is still missing. So we're kind of focusing more on Latin America, but we would open our doors if anyone wants to collaborate on any of the other chapters as well. Thank you so much, Claudia, for that. Um, uh, I have also one question for Augustine, hoping that uh, the time is still on our side. Uh, sorry for, yeah, for Eduardo, I'm sorry. And uh, I wanted to know, um, so far since you started, could you tell us what has been you, the biggest accompl accomplishment of the YWP Bolivian chapter? Thank you, Jatayna. Uh, well, this is a big question, you know, we are kind of new here. We, we've been taking baby steps in order to, to create our, our chapter. So I would say that our, our main achievement so far is the former uh, approval of our application. The, we want, well, we're in the process of getting to know the real persons that are, are going to work with us. And this, for me, and I think I'm going to, to tell this, this story of this webinar to all my colleagues, if they are not here in the audience. Uh, getting to know all you, all of you, all of the regional chapters is a big achievement for us because we, we now know that, for example, Agustin, Claudia, uh, I don't remember the name of the, 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 the our colleague from Mexico, sorry, but uh, they are already working on big issues and, and big, big things. So we want to go to there, we want to get there, and we want to improve our own, our own I don't know how to say, our own necessities, you know, get, get, get a mixture of our own necessities with, with example of all the regional chapters and, get, and trying to, 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 do, to do the best. We are now the, the new guys here. I don't know if we are really the new guys, but we want to improve over time and we want to get things done. That is the main issue. Thank you so much, Eduardo. And I, I also believe that uh, creating the chapter is uh, one of the biggest steps. We all know how the process is and uh, we know that it requires a lot of work. and. Uh, it's really good that now we also have uh, a Bolivian chapter that is going to work forward and we're looking, uh, we look on seeing you, we look forward, sorry, and seeing you uh, and the activities that uh, you'll be doing. So I think we still have like, uh, okay, in the next five minutes, I know we will not be able to, sorry, to um, to have the breakout session as we planned, but I think we're going to invite uh, the panelists from uh, the first panel. We would like to, I'm going to, to ask two questions and uh, whatever feels comfortable with any panelist and any speaker, you can answer. So the first question will be, uh, what 
what do you find the most important and most beneficial personally for you to be part of YWP chapter? And the second question will be, uh, what will be your main advice for the water youth in the country of America and Latin America who will decide or who are interested to establishing a YWP chapter. So I think uh, we're going to start uh, with our panelist from Canada, if he's still there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So the first question, eh? um, I think uh, you learn leadership, right? That's the biggest thing. You learn how to, um, I think one of the things engineering schools have not done very good is teaching us how to communicate and uh, at the same time, uh, network. And um, I think uh, by being a part of a YWP group in the past four years, I have seen my network expand, but also uh, not speaking about myself. Uh, when we took initiatives, uh, we have seen the people who have been volunteering for us, they have seen their network expand. They have taken on more leadership roles. In fact, some of our volunteers are now planning to be a part of the executive team for the next coming term. So um, leadership is a very big word. It covers a lot of different aspects, but I would say that um, by being a part of the YWP chapter, uh, you are uh, slowly developing yourself to being a leader. So I would say that is, uh, that is one of the biggest advantages. Um, for the second question, I think it was direct. I I'm not the best person to answer that. Um, I, I would let uh, Mahmoudul uh, answer that question. Mahmoudul, are you there? Yeah, can you repeat the question, please? Uh, the, quest the second question was, uh, what will be your main advance, uh, advice sorry, mm -hmm. for the young water professionals or the water youth in your country uh, who, we, who are interested in establishing a YWP chapter? Okay, so I, I first I want to mention that uh, first um, grow some network. For example, like uh, if uh, someone or any country wants wants to, you know, start the, the chapter, the main challenge is the membership, I would say. So like, like you know that uh, it's a new chapter, but you will not find the membership. And if you don't have enough member, you cannot, you know, start any events. Or that that will be challenging. Like let's say if you if you want to organize any any event, you need members and you need some volunteers. So I would say that before starting a chapter, try to you know expand the network among the YWPs and make a group, like say internal group, and discuss among yourselves like how you can collaborate and how you can start the chapter. And when you are when you think that you are ready to start in terms of you have enough uh, you know members, let's say uh, 15, 20, 25 some dedicated members because because it's not like starting a chapter because when you start a chapter the more responsibility will come you have to continue right so you need some dedicated person who will give some time who who has some motivation so try to get as much uh, similar member as you can and when you are uh, think when you think that okay you are you have enough members and you have some motivation motivated people and then then uh, go for you know, starting the chapter Thank you so much for that valuable contribution. I think I will give Rene kindly. Is it possible to keep it under one minute because we're running out of time? <laughs> yes, yes. For the first question, uh, I think that the most benefit to, to, to the chapter is the networks because when you have some problem or you, you can communicate with, with other uh, member of, of the chapter and maybe um, this person resolve your 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 problem or your I don't know when you you um, uh, uh, you need to obtain a, a, a job I don't know the networks is the is the the, the most to me the, the 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 main benefit and for the second I think uh, it's important to start step by step uh, with. Um, a, a little activities, but little but solid. Uh, for example, I, I don't know some some uh, uh, activity online or um, some uh, some flyer for for the social media. And you you uh, this uh, this um, material uh, um, 
allow to 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 involve other other person and increase the participation of, of, of the in, in this case of, of the young people. Thank you so much, Rene. Uh, I think Claudia can go on. Uh, you just need to answer one question. Time is not on our favor. <laughs> Sure. Well, uh, we're very interesting questions, but I think my main advice would be to be organized from the beginning. Maybe we can uh, borrow a page from software development and try to apply agile methodologies for organization, have something that's centralized so everybody can have eyes on the documents and things going on. We use Milanote in Ecuador, but you can use Notion or, or whatever software. But I think that's essential so you don't lose track of what we're, uh, you're doing and you don't multiply efforts and end up two people doing the same thing. So I think that's very useful. Thank you so much, Claudia. Um, and then uh, we still have two, Agustin. Hi, um, yes, I am very proud to participate in this network, uh, it gave more access to global and regional information. Um, an advice for young water professionals is to, is to take advantage of this opportunity, share knowledge, experience, and energies, because uh, if you have a, a knowledge, it will be more valuable if you share it and, and it will increase your leadership and, and improve your skill. Um, I think that it is the most important thing that I have to, to say. And I'll finally conclude this session by uh, asking Eduardo to take no more than one minute, if possible, so that we can conclude in time. Eduardo, you have the floor. Okay, thank you very much. Well, uh, I agree with with everyone else. Uh, the networking is the most beneficial beneficial thing from from this from this uh, endeavor. So, uh, my main uh, my main advice for new people that wanted to create a chapter is to highlight the 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 fact that this is a volunteer thing, and we do this as a as a thing because we love to share things we love to organize things we love to get things done we love to 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 share knowledge i don't know and as claudia put it in the in her slide uh, life gets in the way so we have to get to take this into account and make room for for improvement share our knowledge share our our or documents or technical documents, uh, technical skills, I don't know. So this would be my, my answer. Thank you so much, Eduardo. So we still have two minutes left and I don't know if Lyudmila is there. Is she there? Uh, yes, I'm here. And I just want to say like, I'm really thankful for guys to, you know, to get together and to share their experience with all other, uh, uh, participants because I believe like all of the things what I always said or like advices or like share the experience it will have like for sure like echo with in in their mind and it may inspire them also to 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 search for some uh, opportunities or also to create some opportunities for someone so I believe that is really amazing Thank you so much, Lyudmila. So uh, I'll conclude by saying thank you to all the participants, the speaker and the organizer of this uh, get together session. And uh, I hope that all of the participants and uh, even speaker learned something from uh, what has been shared. And uh, we will have something also that we'll take to our own, uh, our own chapter uh, to implement so that all of us uh, can uh, actually be very active and help achieve SDG 6. So I hope it's not uh, our last interaction. I hope we're going to keep in touch online and uh, I hope to see you in the next event. Thank you so much.